On behalf of producer Kathy Stacy, our photographer of current pictures, Steve Moran, WCAT president Ron Moses, and myself, Dave Hubbard, we welcome you to the first of our historic shows, Winthrop Then and Now Reflections by the Winthrop Improvement and Historical Association. It is intended to provide historical information on the development of our town and, while the format will vary from show to show, it is our desire to depict various locations in town, first as they appear today and then as they appeared at some known time in the past, or to portray historical events and locations during some specific period of time in the past. As most of our viewers are aware, the original 1637 allotments of land on our peninsula to 15 people had a stipulation that to retain ownership, a house of some sort had to be built on the owner's parcel of land within two years. Only four of the five buildings erected in the early 1600s, all north of Cottage Hill, were still here in 1753 when businesses were started at Point Shirley. The first such business was a fishery, followed shortly by a salt works, which resulted in a number of houses to be built at, point, at the point, two of which still exist on Siren Street. Except for these two businesses at Point Shirley, Winthrop pretty much has remained four farms until 1820. While a small amount of development really began with the entry of a horse-drawn trolley, pictures of which will be shown shortly, seven small villages were founded as follows. One, McGee's Corner, located at the junction of Winthrop and Main Streets. Two, Highlands on Crest Avenue. Three, Ocean Spray at the junction of Shirley Street and Neptune Avenue. Four, Delby's Corner at the junction of Shirley Street and Washington Avenue. Five, Metcalf Square. Six, French Square at the center. And seven, Point Shirley. Each had a general store, drug store, barber shop, and a place to dine. And as the narrow gauge railroad developed, five of these villages had a station located there. To start our show, here is the old Winthrop Views slide, which is one, uh, is the one early lo local photographer Harry C. Wharf used for his shows. Let's look at some of the pictures of Delby's Corner, one of the previously noted seven villages, established in Winthrop about 1890. This picture looks north up Shirley Street in 2010 where one can see De Palma's Restaurante on the left with an apartment building just beyond it. Note the bay windows up the side of it. On the right side of the street is the Shirley Hardware in the white building. The next picture, again, looking up Shirley Street, was taken about 1920, and the narrow gauge railroad uh, beach station is shown on the left with the same apartment building beyond it. In the area just before the apartment building, where we previously saw De Palma's restaurant, was the Meyer Brill TV shop in the 1950s, after the railroad station was torn down in the early 1940s. In the center of Shirley Street is the trolley, which went from Delby's Corner out to Point Shirley from 1910 to 1928. The large brick building further up the street is the Winthrop Casino, which was there from 1912 to 1962, across the street from what was the Shirley Street School. The casino housed the bowling alleys taken from the new Winthrop Hotel in the 1950s, and they were operated by Ernest Lessard and his brother. In the next picture, we are looking back another 32 years to 1885, where one can see the white stable on the left for the new Winthrop Hotel, which was located on Sturgis Street behind uh, the Shirley Hardware, where the EB uh, East Boston Neighborhood Health Center building is today. The stable was located across the street from the Shirley Street School, uh, where the previously shown Winthrop Casino will be built in 1912. In the basement of this stable was a piggery, and in the top floor was a dance hall. On the Friday nights, the young men of that time would invite their best girl to the piggery to dance.
Again, standing in the same intersection and looking east down Sturgis Street toward the ocean, we can see the Shirley Street hardware with the East Boston Neighborhood Health Center uh, nursing home on the left and the High Tide coffee shop on the right. Note, the cornice over the High Tide and the bay windows over the Shirley hardware as they can be seen in the next picture. Now let's go back about a hundred years. On the right is Stover's Drug Store and on the left is Winthrop Drug Store with the previously mentioned new Winthrop Hotel built in the 1880s behind it. And you'll see that obviously it's older. There's a horse and carriage rather than the cars of today. Now turn around and look up Washington Avenue in 2008. See the Washington Arms apartment building built about 1900 in the center. Our next series of pictures is on Revere Street where one can see the Winthrop uh, Marketplace and the corner at the corner of Central Street. And now the same building when in the late 1970s it served as the water and sewer department building and you can see there was some construction activity was going on at the time. And in the same corner in 1875, one can see the car barn for the horse-drawn trolley of that day. While not visible, if one could look way up Revere Street to where the uh, Sitco station, uh, gas station is today, you would see the lumber company of that day. This is another view of the horse-drawn trolley of the 1870s. They were a very unique looking uh, vehicle and they went from here all the way out to East Boston and back and then they crossed over what is now the uh, uh, golf course in order to get over toward the water. For those who remember the Cliff House Hotel diagonally across the street from the Winthrop Arms, here is a view looking up Cliff Avenue from Sewell Avenue. Note the first two stories are constructed of stone taken from the beach, for which the original owner, Mr. H.H. H. Hutchinson, was fined $25 per rock. He then completed the building out of wood. According to our past town council, Joe Harvey, that fine is still in effect, and it's there to prevent our rocky beaches from becoming mud flats. So if you see anybody taking rocks from the beach, warn them that they could be fined $25 a rock. And, and if they uh, uh, are taking very many rocks, you know, more than one or two for a, a, gar a, a rock garden, I think you better call the police and give them a chance to come down and talk to them. This is the same view in 1990s when this site was a nursing home. Today, there are three lovely multifamily homes on this site. And up in the distance, you can see the Winthrop Arms, where I suspect many of you have gone for a delightful dinner at different times. This is, it's a little bit faded, but this is a picture of the house at 233 Pleasant Street, which was the home of Harry Wharf, an early photographer. The tower had a cupola which was burned and is now flat roofed as shown in the center of this picture. And you can see the tower goes up and it's kind of got a flat roof on it. And uh, now we'll go back and take a look at it, what it looked like in the past. Going back 130 years to 1882, this same house can be seen as a Victorian home. Note the chimney. Let's enter the house and climb to the top of the tower and look out the windows where we will again see the same chimney. You can see the chimney there on the right. You will see uh, Sargent Street and the nearby edge of Somerset Avenue on your left. In the distance is the Court Park section of town just before the golf course was built there. 
When the area was com uh, converted to homes that are, there to that are there today, the roads were laid out on the golf course fairways, and hence the area became known as the maze. And the gentleman that was going to build homes there originally, when he uh, got ready to build, uh, had hired somebody to lay out a nice square rectangular road system in the place. And the cost was going to be so prohibitive that when he talked to some friends of his, they said, don't. Just lay the roads on the fairway. And as I mentioned before, that's why it's called the maze today. Looking down Somerset Avenue to Johnson Avenue, John Sergeant Tewksbury's house was at 6 Somerset Terrace. That's the one down, sort of on the left-hand side, down at the end of uh, Somerset Terrace. Uh, it was later cut in two, where the largest portion moved around the corner to 205 Somerset Avenue. The small yellow building was part of a ship that was wrecked on Governor's Island, and then they was brought over here uh, to our shores and was used for storage purposes. But you can see that there's, there's very little development in the area, and our roads, of course, at that time were dirt roads. Now, turning more to the left and looking up Pleasant Street, one can see Bellevue Avenue, which was then uh, Prescott Street, and up uh, to the up to Cottage Hill Park Road with Cottage Hill in the distance before the water tower was built in 1910. And well, you can't quite see it, but from Cottage Hill uh, looking across, uh, there's, there's just a dark line, which is not very visible, which was Ural Beach and went on out to Point Shirley. This is a picture of the inn at Crystal Cove on Shirley Street in the year 2000, across the street from the Winthrop Yacht Club. And I think uh, you probably have noticed today that there have been, uh, there's a swimming pool in front of it and that they have a very elaborate lighting system. And as you drive by, there are lights all over the building and it looks very nice. This is the same building in 1915, which was then named the Colonial Inn. The rear section of this building is the 1846 home of John Tewksbury. This was one of the two houses on the north side of the hill. The second one was owned by Charles Tewksbury on Beacon Street, now long gone since 1904. The cannon, which one can see on the uh, front lawn toward the right of the picture, is reported to have been brought from Fort Ticonderoga to defend Boston from the uh, Dorchester Heights back at the time of the Revolutionary War. This picture is of the same location in the 1880s, and one can see the previously referenced John W. Tewksbury's home on the, on the uh, left. It was built in 1846, and it is now what I before, told you before as part of the inn at Crystal Cove. The barn then was in the center of the picture, and up at the top of the hill is Cottage Hill, where many years later they built the water tower. This picture depicts the entrance to Winthrop from Beachmont. And uh, we have a little story to tell you about that. Um, the uh, uh, as, you, as we know, Point Shirley had a number of prominent food services established since 1910. Orcott's, Pulsifer's, Wagner's, Dupree's, Houghton's, Surside 16, and Madrid, to name a few. Today, Wagner's, with the successors, will be featured uh, in, with these pictures. Um, the name, long associated with Winthrop, is a place for good food, entered into town in the early, in 1920 when Fred and Marie Wegener came here from Germany, where Marie had competed in the Olympics as a shot putter. In November 1926, they first opened up a small restaurant at 15 Somerset Avenue. A few years later, they moved to Short Beach at the bottom of Upland Road, 
where it meets Revere Street as shown in the first picture. While extremely unlikely, a rumor exists that this new location uh, was thought to be made just outside of the town boundary and therefore they would be able to sell beer and wine. However, this turned out not to be true at the time. The current seawall had not yet been constructed and children can be seen uh, in this picture enjoying themselves on the beach in front of the restaurant. Sometime in the early 1930s, Wigginers relocated to a new building on the point at 16 Taft Avenue, where the building operated until 1964. For children that are watching this show, uh, we've got a, a trivia question which we thought we'd throw out and uh, see how many of you can, uh, can come up with the answer. And that is, we have a lot of streets in our town which have been named after people. And there are a number of streets in our town that have been named after presidents of the United States. Let's see how many of them you can figure out and write it on a slip of paper. And, uh, and uh, if you get the right number, and I'll tell you in the next program how many there were and what they were. And uh, then you can see how well you did uh, with that trivia question. In addition to the Winthrop Improvement and Historical Association, which owns and maintains the 1637 Dean Winthrop House, as a 501c3 nationally authorized historic site. The Winthrop Historic Commission has developed a large tabletop model of the town as it appeared in 1906, with a scale model of the narrow gauge railroad operating on it. This is located in one of the first floor rooms of the old E.B. Newton School on Pauline Street. The Winthrop Transcript newspaper has been publishing an historical Winthrop Then and Now article weekly for over 12 years which Steve Moran and I prepare on behalf of the Winthrop Improvement and Historical Association. Uh, we have also published three books, Mapping Winthrop, which is a very large collection of maps from 1624 up to date, showing the development of the town, the number of buildings and so forth, uh, using maps as a skeletal framework upon which to write. We wrote a book on postcards of Winthrop and a student activity book on the Narrow Gauge Railroad, all of which are on sale at Michael's Hallmark Card Shop, the Book Depot on Somerset Avenue, the Public Library, Elliott and Whittier Insurance Company, and the Century 21 Real Estate Office. This completes our first show, and while we have material for many, many more, we would welcome any comments, questions, or suggestions for future programs from you, our viewers. Please feel free to call me at the number shown uh, on your screen. Thank you for watching the show and we hope you enjoyed it. Again, your comments or suggestions will be welcome. Good evening.